Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the generate effects in After Effects. So these effects can be very useful and cool because many of them create something out of nothing. And let's begin with the first one, which is four color gradient. Now I've got a couple things on the timeline, just a random clip and an audio track, but for this one, I'm going to create a new solid. So we just have a solid layer to work with. And the four color gradient effect does just that. It generates a four color gradient and you have access to all four points and you can choose the color of all those four points as well. And remember, you can always keyframe and animate and blend any of these things. Next up, we have advanced lightning. So this one generates a lightning effect and you can choose everything about it from the direction, the starting point and the end point and the color and the glow and all that. So by default, it might look a little bit fake, but with the power of After Effects and blending and all that stuff, you could probably make it look a little bit more realistic. So you can see it kind of even has its own properties, like it sticks to the edges of stuff as I move the point around. There's a little bit of conductivity to it, so you can adjust the settings of how it reacts with your shapes and masks as well. Next up, we have Audio Spectrum and Audio Waveform. Now I do have full separate tutorials dedicated to just audio spectrums and waveforms if you're interested in checking those out. So I'm just going to briefly show you an example. Uh, I have this audio clip on the timeline and I can choose in the audio spectrum an mp3 or audio clip as the reactive layer and you can see the audio spectrum will react to that. Now what's the difference between the spectrum and the waveform? Well, you can see the audio spectrum behaves like those series of points, whereas the waveform is like a, the visual representation of the audio waveform traveling through. So it, they each have their own look. That's the spectrum. That's the waveform. And you can adjust all things about them, like what certain frequencies they actually respond to the height or the amount. You can change the color of them. And so there's lots of fun you can have with these audio reactive spectrums linking them. Next up we have beam. This just generates like kind of a laser beam. You can choose the starting and end points and animate this in all kind of ways I'm sure like little lasers or lines sweeping through. There's all type of ways that you might need a beam. And it has a little bit of glow and softness to it. And you can also adjust the color of the inside or outside of that glow. Now this next clip, I'm actually going to apply it onto a video clip. What it does, CC Glue Gun, is it creates like a painting or drawing with water or liquid. It's hard to see, there's a little liquid dot there, but if I increase the stroke width here, just to show you, I'll make it bigger. You can see it kind of wraps your video or whatever's inside there in a kind of a liquid bubble and distorts it that way. And to get the full potential out of this, you actually have to add some animation keyframes. So if I change the brush position from this point, and then I move a little bit further, a couple seconds ahead, and move it to the right, you can see it creates like a liquid trail that blobs along. So we have a glue gun type of effect, and you can adjust all types of things about it like the light and the shading and the type of wobble it has. So that's the glue gun effect. Pretty cool. Next up we have CC light burst. What this does is it kind of creates like a burst of light coming out of your image. It almost looks like a radial blur but it's reacting more toward you know like a luminance type of way. You can adjust the intensity and the strength of it and also the center point of the light burst. Along with that, we have CC Light Rays, which is similar, but a different effect. This one kind of takes your original image and kind of shoots light rays around the contours of it. You can see it's almost like a distortion that's blended back in, but it looks really cool, almost like you're shining a light through your image. Next up, we have Light Sweep. This one kind of just adds a sweep of light over your image. So just kind of a line, you can use it. It can go across your image or scan through or act like a light beam that appears through your image and you can change whatever angle you want it at. You can also change the color of it. So just a 
bluish or reddish beam if you want and you can make it grow in size with some keyframes if you want you can start small and then slowly get bigger something like that like a rip of light opening up just some ideas for you and next up we have cc threads this one kind of weaves a texture weaves your image or layer through a texture so it takes on this woven texture and even gets a little bit of transparency behind it you have the option to adjust the width and the height of that weave and how many overlaps it has and also the angle of it next up getting back to some more generative effects we have cell pattern this one creates this bubbly cell pattern and you can choose different types of patterns actually bubbles or crystals just different contrast settings for it and you can also animate it in different ways too so like some of the animation presets that we've seen in earlier episodes these type of effects are how those are built kind of by adding keyframes on something like the evolution also maybe adding color correcting effects on top of them you can create these animated backgrounds or textures to use in different ways along with that we have checkerboard this one just creates a checkerboard for whenever you need one and you can also change it so it's not just perfect squares you can make it lines and you can blend it in with your original layer in different ways so there's always a ton of different ways that you can use stuff like this, whether for texture or for masking and blending, creating some kind of weird transitions with the black and white information. Next up, we have circle, just a simple circle tool for whenever you need to create one. Again, you can use this on its own or blending with other layers. For example, like a quick circle transition we can create from scratch is setting it to a blending mode of multiply and slowly fading in or if we just wanted like a peephole effect we can do that with this circle plus blending mode cutout so there's endless possibilities just based on what problems you're trying to solve or your ideas in combination along with that we have ellipse it just creates this kind of circular beam and you can adjust the size of it so, so we can make some portal type of things or line circles Again, this is kind of like the beam effect, but just a complete circle this time. Next up, we have eyedropper fill. This is an interesting effect. It takes whatever color is at that point, wherever you have the sample point at, now it's in the center, and it fills the entire screen with that point. So as this video plays, that point is always changing. And so we're kind of getting a random flash of colors, which can be cool to have random sample points in this way bringing us these animated flickers. If I lower the opacity of this, just so you can see what's going on, as I change the sample point, you can see that's what the fill color changes to. So if I always had it sampling in this corner instead, then that's what color it would always fill the original image back up with. Along with that, we just have normal fill. So rather than filling with the eyedropper, you can just pick a color. So there's probably plenty of times where you're going to need a solid color. You can also choose whenever you're creating a new solid, you can choose whatever the fill color is going to be. But this is also another way so that you can just create it on any layer. Next up, we have fractal. This just creates a fractal pattern, which is generated using different mathematical equations. So you have different kinds of fractals and you can change the position and the magnification of them and zoom into the fractal or out. Fractals are a really interesting visual representation of different math. And I'm sure that there's some sort of secret to the universe and life in, inside of these equations somewhere that is being visually represented. So next up, a little more simple than that, we just have gradient ramp. This just creates a simple gradient ramp from one point to the next, similar to the four color gradient or just the solid fill. This fills with two colors and you can choose the starting point. So that kind of lets you choose the angle and also the contrast by how close together these points are. It's usually just easier to drag the points with the mouse rather than the sliders, but you can make it linear or radial. And there's tons of times where you might want a gradient, whether it's just for a simple background or for creating black and white layer masks or effect masks. Next up, we have a solid grid, just another one like the checkerboard. 
whenever you want to create a grid that can come in handy in different ways. Pretty self-explanatory. Once you get familiar with the effect controls, a lot of these, you start to pick up on them intuitively. They all have the same things, blending, opacity, color, size, position. Next up, we have lens flare. This generates a lens flare and you can choose what type of lens. So a lens flare is replicating what would happen when light flares into a camera lens in, in real life, in real optics. And you know, you might have seen it if you're ever taking pictures on your phone and aiming at the sun. And these just give you a couple different type of lens options and the lens flares that they produce. It's funny because we don't exactly see light this way in our own eyes. And so sometimes we're using these type of effects for dramatic purpose. But next up we have paint bucket. If you're familiar with the paint bucket tool in paint, like Microsoft paint, this is just like that. It clicks and fills a paint bucket click on to whatever point you want. So right now it's right in the center, but I can paint bucket fill any point with any color. So you might ask, why would you want to do that? But it can actually be like a workaround way to create selections or quick green screen masks on certain points because it automatically detects the edges. So if you wanted to mask something out and get a good selection automatically, you could do that for some clips. And also just for whatever other purposes you might want to use a paint bucket tool. We have a few more left. The next one is radio waves. This one's cool. It just generates automatic radio wave effect. And over time, it automatically has this animation where they're expanding out from the center. So it's a really fun one to play around with. You have all these different parameters, like the frequency of radio waves that come out, create these cool patterns, the expansion of them, the direction of the radio waves, or kind of like the velocity angle of them. And you can choose the shape as well, do a triangle, square. So this one's really cool. You can create all kind of expanding patterns. And you can also base it off of the contours of your layer or of a mask that you have. So if I was to just draw a mask in whatever weird shape I wanted, and I used that mask as the radio wave, then we'd get a radio wave in whatever the shape of that mask that we drew was. So this effect can be lots of fun. Going along with things that require masks, the next one is scribble. And so if you drag it on a clip, you won't normally see what's going on. But if you drag it on a mask, then what it does is it adds this scribble effect inside the mask. It's actually a little animated. So it's like this jiggly scribble and you can choose to animate it too. So it starts and ends. You could scribble in whatever shapes that you want. I have a full separate tutorial where I show you how to do scribble text, where the text gets scribble drawn in and animated. If you want to check that out on my channel. Along with that, we have stroke. This is another one that applies onto a mask or shape. If I kind of turn off the scribble, we see there's still a stroke on this mask if I wanted it and I can choose the size and I can also animate it. So if I wanted to change the start percentage, kind of create this stroke that goes along from start to end and fills in that mask. Next up we have Vegas. This kind of adds like a glittery sparkle to the contours and edges of the image. So you can add a little glitter animations onto whatever certain clips you want and you can change the color of that sparkle if you want let's say just green or blue instead so that can actually be a cool stylistic effect for images or text or different shapes and lastly we have right on so this is kind of like the glue gun but, but whereas the glue gun was like a liquid drawing from the image this is just purely like a pencil or paint drawing so i have the brush size and again if i animate it from one point with keyframes and then move over on the timeline to another point. You see it just simply creates a brush stroke. And you can also choose how long that brush stroke lasts, like one second or 0.1 second, if you want it to be more like a traveling smudge instead. I have a tutorial if you want to see how you can reveal your original text or image 
with this right on effect and some animation keyframes if you're still interested in that. So that wraps up everything in the generate effects folder. So in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the immersive video effects like VR blur, VR glitch, glow, and more. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my new videos. And I'll see you in the next episode where we go over immersive video effects.